What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Captain Price with Captain Price Reacts, and today we gonna be watching Jubilee. My entire face was burnt. Ask me quite anything. So, if y'all new to the channel, go ahead, like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Oh man, my nose is running, so I might need an aspirin. So you know, but yeah, let me go ahead and get into this video for y'all. What's the pain like during the fire? I had none. None? None. If you were alone in a room with a burn survivor, what would you ask? Do you think pretty privilege exists? After the accident, did you have a hard time looking at yourself in the mirror? Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Doing great, doing great. What's your name? Jay. Jay, it's lovely to meet you, Jay. Same here. Do you mind talking about your accident? Sure. I lived in Puerto Rico. It was in 1998 after Hurricane George, and we didn't have electricity for more than a month. And I had a couple of seizures, and I went through several um, neurological studies. I had um, glue on my scalp. I had to remove with some type of oily substance. My dad was outside um, dealing with a generator. So what I did was grab a candle that started pouring the grease over my hair. And when I leaned forward to see myself better on this area on the left side, that's where my hair actually slipped over my shoulder and touched the flame, the candle. And in less than a second, I was just a human torch. That must have been really difficult. What was the pain like during the fire? I had none. None? None. My burns, they were um, deep third degree, so most of my nerves um, were damaged. What I felt was extreme heat. I remember um, swallowing the flames <laughs> and feeling it all the way in my lungs. But in that moment, I had no pain at all. Wow. So it's just completely nothing to you at all? Completely nothing. No, I wow. have never experienced that kind of peace ever. Wow. That's, that's insane. Yes. <laughs> uh, what was your hospital experience like after being burned? That's a very intense question. Even my, my heart is racing a little. That experience was very, very intense because I was in a induced coma, but still you as a patient, you can actually hear. And I remember the doctors betting on my life. I don't think she's gonna be more than 12 hours. I don't give her more than 16 hours. And I'm here having this experience. I'm trying to scream my lungs out like, no, 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 no. I have more time. And then I started recovering and the Breedman, I don't know if you know what that means. I, I don't. You don't, so that's the process that us burn survivors have to go through, and is where they actually have to scrape the dead skin from your body. And even though, yes, they put sedation, my body got used to the medication so quickly that I actually felt every second of it. Damn. I remember having to go through a lot of deep breaths and hold my tears and try not to move as much so they could get through it as quick as possible. But yeah, it's been kind of bittersweet. <laughs> well, I am I'm glad that you're, you're still here. Yeah. For, for her in general, it's like her, from that to happen, her skin grew back tremendously beautiful, like, See, you can tell she's still a beautiful woman. Um, like the, like you could tell it was bad, but then you could tell that her, she took, she took some good medicine. Like I don't know if he had, she had a skin transplant or what, but it, John, like you could totally tell to be honest. Thank you. About the accident, what triggers you, and how do you cope with it? When I'm close to a fireplace or a bonfire where I feel like extreme heat, I feel it and I get that feeling of the moment where I was actually swallowing the flames. 
But what I do is I just breathe and even though I've been through so much in life, I'm still here. I have a second chance and I'm trying to make the best out of it. Do you feel that your, your quote unquote normal day to day life has changed and, and how so? I do have certain physical limitations <coughs> and my skin is so tight, especially around my neck that my skin pulls. It's very hard for me even to sleep. I get spasms pretty much every single day and I get migraines and my hands, sometimes they don't work completely. And that could be a little bit frustrating because I want to do so much. Have people treated you um, differently or even looked at you differently in any aspect? Do you ever feel alienated in your day-to-day -day life? Like, do people, do you feel people looking at you weird? Oh, yes, definitely. I've had people that ask me if I wanted to. Another thing, I know I'm probably pausing it like shit. My nose is running and shit. They want is that. Her, what she went through is like life changing. It changed your life tremendously. I've been through something, not a fire, but I was in a critical shooting that I, it was a 90% chance I could have lost my life at one time. Like, my right arm is still seeing effects from it. I had to regain my nerves. My lung will never be the same. It's a lot. Like, I, you, certain things, you'll never, it's like you're, you're, it, it you take life for granted and then certain things like that and what happened to me, you would just, sh surely enough, just don't take life for granted. Every little, it's the little things that count. Uh, you know, you don't never see as everything a failure. You just see everything as a lesson learned. So things like this is a, a true big factor. Damn. It's a true big factor on people. Um, yeah. Myself, if I ever contemplated suicide, if I feel ashamed for the way that I look, my skin, if I go to a restaurant, I've had situations where I had someone across the restaurant just completely staring at me, and I'm here like. Man, if you seeing this, you are beautiful. If you seeing this, you are beautiful. They might not want you, but I want you. You know, I. Is you could tell you can. Look at somebody, it's always, you would look at somebody like her. I had, I was, my ex-girlfriend was in a critical car accident. A lot of you know, they had to reconfigure her face, all that. I can see beyond that stuff. You can put every, if you, if your, if your mental is like that and your, your brain capacity, because everybody don't have brain capacity, you could put pieces together and you could see beyond that and see the beauty and the beauty that was there and still is there. So don't listen to people that like don't don't listen to people. Ain't nothing wrong with you, miss. Like for real. You are I still have beautiful. A mouth. I eat just like you do. I drink just like you do. I walk exactly. just like you do. But yes, yeah, society has been very cruel. People have society spat on my up. face, pulled my hair just trying to see if I have a wig on or not. Um, I've been called scar-faced, you name it. That's fucked well, up. do you think pretty privilege exists? Yes, I have actually witnessed that. So as a teenager, I wanted to apply for a job at a store and they said, no, we're not hiring. And two more girls come in asking for an application and they got the freaking application. And I'm here like, oh, wow. So just because I'm burned means that I'm not good enough to work. So unfortunately, yeah, that happens quite often. How have your experiences affected your relationship with those around you? Well, I have come to learn that people show their true colors when something like this <laughs> change your entire life. And I did have one situation where a family member asked me over the phone, whenever you're done with your surgeries, I would like to see you to see if you are gonna be a valuable person in my family and in society. That was very hurtful. I did let it get to me and I went through <laughs> therapy for insomnia and depression for a while. Do you still feel a little resentment toward that person? That person passed away um, years ago. 
When I saw him laying down in that casket, I felt very sad for him and I actually forgave him for his ignorance and I released myself from that burden. It takes a lot to forgive somebody for doing something like that. Did you feel nervous at all about being asked these questions? I did. Before I came here yesterday, I remember sitting in a corner at the airport in Puerto Rico and I started to cry. The fact that I have the opportunity to bring awareness is very special to me because it, it needs to be done. It needs to be done. Like we say in Spanish, yo tengo el cuero duro, I have a thick skin, but not everyone does. And to me, it's it's very, very special. I, so I'm very, very grateful for every single person that have been seated next to me. <laughs> Describe your best and worst day since your accident. My worst day was when I had uh, my surgery from the tissue expander. They had to put a skin graft on the center of my head. The pain was insane. That I think that was the, the worst that I've had. My best day, I have two, and is the moment I met both of my daughters when they were born. They have pushed me to be a better woman, a better human being, a better person, and everything that I do, I do it for them. So you have children. Um, yes, I do. That's awesome. What do you feel that you can teach them that um, if you hadn't had those experiences, you think you might not have otherwise been able to? Something that I teach them every single day is to accept themselves as they are, that they should love themselves inside out. That love should translate through our smile, through our eyes through the way that we carry ourselves, through the way that we actually interact with other people. And that's something that I always teach him, you know, you need to try to keep your heart as pure and as loving as possible, because that's what's gonna take you moving forward in your life. Right. Well, this is my last question, but can I give you a hug? Yes, definitely. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you're gonna make me cry. <laughs> I'm already going to cry. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. She is bad on the low. You could tell before them burn, she was bad. She still is bad, crazy enough. Just, you know, it's crazy. I know somebody that actually had, um, was in a situation like that. Um, I know two people. One, one, the lady died from old age. May she rest in peace. And the other one, I grew up, I made technique, I did grow up with her, we, you know, knew her since middle school. Her arm was burnt, but she, what she did, she got her whole arm tattooed, so, still, it's still, that does not, it burns, don't make a person, people should just, that's the, she right, with society is, it's like, y'all quick to criticize somebody, that's why when I see somebody that's drawn on somebody that's mentally challenged or something like that, I real live step to him right then and there. Like kids, like teenagers, I can't say kids, teenagers are famous for that. But y'all go ahead, like, subscribe, turn on notifications. I will see y'all in the next video.